Hi everyone. Let's make a snack. This tasty thing is a stroop waffle. Now, before I finish all of this in one go, I should probably tell you what it is. This thin, cookie, crisp, caramel, wafery thing that I'm having right here is a Dutch dessert that originated in the late 18th century and early 19th century, when bakers having excess scraps and syrups and all sorts of things left over at the end of the day began pressing them together and making this little dessert right here. After a while of this just being a cookie of leftovers, a regular recipe began to form and we got what we have today as the stroop waffle, which literally means syrup waffle by the way. Flash forward to today and you'll find this type of cookie in all different forms under all different types of names across Europe and also in the US. It's a wonderful, not too sweet treat that you can fill with all sorts of different things, have all sorts of different flavors with, and also use in your everyday routine. Because if you noticed, I stuck this cookie on top of my tea. Why did I do that? Well, that's because traditionally this cookie is paired with a hot drink, whether that is tea or coffee or whatever else you have. Now I've left the other half of my cookie on top of my hot beverage, which has been steaming this entire time. And what has happened is my cookie has softened up significantly and that delicious caramel inside has begun to get soft and gooey. And it's just, it's the perfect treat to have with your cup of tea. You can dunk it in. You can not dunk it. There's so many options. But the goal of this Stroop waffle is a wonderful little pairing with your hot drink that gets all melty and delicious when it serves as a lid while you're brewing or waiting for your hot drink to cool down. And I thought we would make some today. So instead of using a traditional caramel filling today, we're gonna be doing an espresso caramel filling. Now the basics of a Stroop waffle are the two parts. You have the cookie part and then you also have the caramel filling part. The cookie is fairly basic. It is a mixture of flour and butter and sugar and egg and cinnamon. For these two components, I have referenced a couple different recipes that already exist on the internet. So I will be linking all of that down below as well as the ultimate ratios that I came up myself when making these. But before we start actually baking, let's talk about the one thing you will need that's a little bit unique for this recipe. Da -da -da. <laughs> this is an iron that is used for very small, just tiny, thin waffling projects. As you can see on the inside, there's not very much room here for your dough. And when you press it down, it is tight. Usually something like this is used for a very small, crispy waffled cookie called a pizzelle, which is not dissimilar to a Stroop waffle, but it does not have that caramel filling inside. They're a little bit tricky, unfortunately, to find inside stores. If you wanna find them online, it's totally possible, and I will link where I got mine down below. So with that being said, I think it's time to make our espresso Stroop waffles. First things first, let's run over ingredients. The first thing we're gonna to put together is our dough, because ultimately we're gonna let it rest for about 25 minutes while we make that caramel filling. Afterwards, we will portion it out into small little weighed out balls, and then we will start assembling our Stroop waffles. <clears throat> okay. Get your pen and paper. I'm gonna tell you some things that you need to know. So starting off, we have two cups of flour and or 250 grams of flour. Then we have a half cup of sugar, which is also 120 grams of sugar. We have four tablespoons of unsalted butter, which has been softening up for the past hour. Up front, we have one teaspoon of active dry yeast. We have one teaspoon of cinnamon. Then we also have 3.5 tablespoons of water, which is about equal to 55 grams of water. And then we have an egg, and I'm sorry, I'm not gonna measure this, but one egg. Egg, whatever that equals to you. Well, let's get mixing. Before we start mixing, I will also note that I am wearing my beans apron today, which along with the rest of my recently launched merch collection is available at mdcdrip.com. Merch plug, and there's the merch plug. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start off with our two cups of flour right into our bowl, followed by our half a cup of granulated sugar, our cinnamon, as well as our active dry yeast. Simply start by mixing all of these dry ingredients nicely together. Okay, after you have all of your dry ingredients all mixed up, you're gonna add in our butter. Now, if you have a pastry cutter, you can use that. Otherwise, you can use a fork and just start mashing all of that butter up. We wanna cut it into all this flour and kind of just like loose chunks, so it's kind of like crumbly. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but just get it into kind of equivalently sized crumbs. Crumbs. <laughs> also, this is definitely not gonna be a day of Morgan Spills coffee. This is gonna be Morgan Spills flour. Now that we have loosely crumbled up our butter, we're gonna add our three and a half tablespoons of warm water and then continue just mixing. After you similarly crumble up that warm water into your dough and you start to get some of these like larger chunks forming together, we're gonna crack our egg into this and then whisk that in as well. Maybe not whisk, maybe gently stir as you've been doing. 
This is my favorite part is the stabbing of the yolk. This is not gonna be a wet dough, by the way. This is gonna be a very, very stiff cookie dough that is not very hydrated. Now at this point, I have gotten everything mixed together as much as possible with my fork. So I'm gonna get in there with my hands and we're just gonna knead this all together. This is like one thing about baking that is so much more fun than making coffee is you have like all the kneading time. Although I suppose the equivalent to like aggressively kneading something is like aggressively knocking out a puck out of a portafilter, question mark. <laughs> Once you have a ball of dough that is homogenous in color and texture, we're gonna wrap this with saran wrap and let it just set off to the side in a warm area for about half an hour. Now that we are all done with the base of our stroop waffle dough, I'm just gonna set it to the side for about 25, 30 minutes. That is the perfect amount of time for us to get our espresso, car ah, that is hard to say, espresso caramel done, <laughs> which means we're gonna transition over to the stove. Welcome to the stovetop angle, where we are now going to attempt to make espresso caramel. And I say attempt because caramel is a very difficult thing to make. It involves melting down sugar at a high temperature without burning it. And there is a very, very, very fine line between the two, as I have discovered in my many tries at this recipe. Now we do have a digital thermometer. If you have one of these, I highly recommend using it when making caramel. It's gonna ensure that you are reaching the proper temperature to melt down your sugar without going beyond that and causing crystallization to happen, which will leave you with sugar salt, which is not what we want in our delicious stroop waffle. Let's run through all of these lovely things right here. So starting off, we have one cup of brown sugar, which is equivalent to 180 grams. Next off, we have one quarter cup of dark corn syrup. This is about 90 grams. Then we have six tablespoons of butter. We have approximately two tablespoons spoons or 30 grams of water. We have a teaspoon and a half of instant espresso powder, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and we will be adding vanilla paste to taste. So starting off, we're gonna turn our stove top to a medium, medium low heat. Caramel takes a lot of time and it's important not to rush it. Otherwise we have that crystallization happening that I mentioned earlier that is just really nasty. So first of all, we're gonna add our brown sugar. We're gonna add our water. We're gonna add our butter. We're also gonna add our corn syrup. And then very slowly just start mixing it together very gently while it begins to melt. You can also add your instant espresso at this point too. Now, once it starts melting together, you don't wanna stir it too much. Mostly you just wanna make sure that butter is becoming one with the sugar that's also melting down. Also, this is the point in the recipe where you are more than welcome to enjoy the wonderful free smells that are probably wafting up at you. I feel like caramel is kind of like a child. If you take your eyes off of it, something goes wrong. If you look at it too long, maybe something goes wrong. If you move it too much, something goes wrong. If you heat it up too much, something goes wrong. This is also a good time to add your vanilla. I do it to taste. I'm a big fan of vanilla, so I'm gonna do approximately half a teaspoon. And remember, this is vanilla paste, not vanilla extract, so this is much more concentrated. You know what? About a teaspoon of vanilla paste. And lastly, once your vanilla is all incorporated, we're gonna sprinkle in our cinnamon. And just repeat that process of slowly mixing it in. At this point, you should start to see the color of your caramel start to deepen. Now there's a wide range of temperatures that are involved with caramel. And it can range anywhere between 275 degrees to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Right now, my caramel is sitting at about 200 degrees. So I wanna continue increasing the heat and melting the sugar, but I don't wanna necessarily get it up to that 350 degrees. I'm aiming on the lower end because this is a caramel sauce and not a caramel candy. So continue cooking your caramel until you reach about 250 degrees Fahrenheit. As it continues to all melt together, your sugar should start to form a much thicker caramel sauce. If you have a spatula like this too, you can also scoop some up and you can actually see the sugar particles, which is not what we want. We don't wanna see any of those. Okay, so now that our caramel has reached around 250 degrees, and when I tasted it, I didn't get any of that sandiness, we're gonna take it off the heat, let it cool just slightly, and we're gonna start working on our waffle dough. Now for the fun part. Our dough is done. It has rested for about 30 minutes now. Our caramel is done and in the back, and it is just cooling down off the heat. I think it's time to assemble. The first thing you're gonna have to do is get your pizza. <laughs> get your pizza iron all out and get it all plugged in, because usually these things take about 50 15 minutes to warm up. And while it warms up, be very careful. Don't touch the top. You can just kind of set it off to the side because we have to portion this out into our little dough balls. I do also recommend that you get out your cutting board and you get out whatever serving tray you're gonna use to put your finished stroop waffles on at this point. The rest of this process goes kind of quickly. Plate to put our finished stroop waffles on. And a knife! No, okay. <laughs> you will need some sort of small sharp knife because as I mentioned before, we are making just one singular cookie, but we are cutting it in half and then putting our caramel in the center of it for just smashing it back together. So get some sort of small sharp thing that you can then use to cut your cookie. YouTube, please don't demonetize me for showing this. We also need a scale. Can you tell I'm getting excited? So we have our scale here. I'm going to portion off approximately 50 gram 
balls of dough. I've at least discovered that 50 grams makes a really, really, really nice shaped. So we'll take our nasty little cover off. Oh, so close. With how many times I've made these, I've gotten really good at judging approximately how much 50 grams is. Almost forgot, this thing is not non-stick, so you will need some sort of lubricant, for lack of a better word. I'm gonna use butter today, but let me give you a rundown of the steps we're gonna take here. The first thing we're gonna do is open this up, and we're only gonna do one at a time. This cookie, once it has been cooked, is going to crisp up really fast, so you only have a limited amount of time that you can cut through it. That being said, we are going to lightly butter the surface, drop our little thing of dough inside, smash it shut. We're gonna give it about, depends on the temperature, it'll get faster as it continues to heat up, but on average, these take about like 45 to maybe 60 seconds at the most. They're a very, very quick cook. After they are all done cooking, we're going to open this up, pull it out, trim off any loose edges, 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 and then immediately cut it in half. After that, we're gonna apply the caramel to the inside and then seal it back up and put it on our plate. If you do too many of these at once, you're gonna run into the problem that I ran into before when I tried to do two at a time. And you're gonna end up with one of the cookies not cutting all the way through or not being pliable enough or not being warm enough to continue melting the caramel down in between. It's just, it's just a mess, just do one at a time. I'm also gonna bring our absolutely beautiful caramel over here so we are all ready to go. Apply your butter. Drop your dough in. We're just gonna leave it. Don't open it up. You can check it after you've given it at least 30 seconds, but you don't wanna check it at first because we want that crispiness, that dark brown color to really come through. Oh, I'm so excited. At this point, your kitchen should smell just amazing. Also get something to help you remove the strip waffle. There we go. That is a pretty dang good looking stroop waffle. So I'm just gonna pull it over here to the side. I don't really have anything I need to trim on it, any edges, so we're just gonna start cutting it open. And I would recommend getting a paper towel or maybe a hot pad or something to block your fingers because this is very, very hot. There's a lot of parts of this recipe that can like injure you. Just be aware. Stroop waffle is open. Let's apply some caramel. You don't need a ton because when you put the top back on this, it's gonna spread that caramel out. So honestly, it's up to you. If you wanna put a ton, go for that. I'm just gonna do a nice little ring in the center and then put my top on and press it down lightly just so that caramel comes to the edges. That's my finished stroop waffle. You can see the caramel coming through. You know, once you get the caramel step of this entire thing done, these are really, really easy. This is a very, very basic dough. These are so delicious too. Like they, they seem fancy and it's funny knowing about the origins of of them just being like a leftover cookie because nowadays when I see one of these, they're like one of my favorite things of all time. Guaranteed to impress at high tea or coffee parties or whatever you're doing. Do people have coffee parties? I hope they do. So proud of these. <laughs> they're like my children. We've made strip waffles. These look delicious. The kitchen smells delicious. I have been snacking on the little rinds that I've been peeling off the sides when I trimmed these up, but I think it's time to try the actual thing. And I think to try the actual thing, we should get a cup of coffee. We should set it on top and we should get it all ooey and gooey and how it's meant to be eaten. <sighs> now we let it steep for about 30 seconds while that caramel inside gets all soft and gooey again and wonderful from that hot coffee that's coming up from beneath it. You can even start to see some of the caramel has begun to leak through. It's soft, it's bendable but it still has some bite to it. This is such a ridiculously wonderful little traditional cookie. It's tasty, it is easy to make, it's a lot of fun to make, and it's something that will impress, I think, pretty much anyone you serve it to. The espresso that we added to the caramel gives it a really, really nice richness to it. It balances out those flavors a little bit more, so this isn't insanely sweet. It's got a tiny bit of that bitterness of that bite to it that's really pleasant. I think this is honestly my ideal cookie, and I'm glad to be able to share it with you finally. Now, just to shout out somewhere local to me, there is a shop nearby to me in Portland, Oregon called Prince Coffee. They're a wonderful little coffee shop and they do their own house-made stroop waffles that you can purchase in store. They're one of the places that inspired me to want to make them myself, so if you're in the area, go check them out. They're awesome. Now, I have got caramel all over my fingers. I would like to go drink this in peace and go read a book, so I think we're gonna wrap up for today. This has been a great time. Let me know if we should do more baking together, because personally, I had a lot of fun and hopefully you did too. As far as plugs go, I have got a new merch line out I'm wearing one of the pieces on top as well as this hoodie right here, which you, you can't totally see, but I've shown it to you before. So anyways, I have merch out and it is at mdcdrip.com if you wanna check that out. Otherwise, I post content on Instagram and TikTok nearly every day and I am Morgan Drinks Coffee on both of those platforms. I hope y'all have a great rest of your day. I'm gonna go take my sticky fingers and go drink the rest of this. See you next time. 
I just walked off screen and spilled coffee directly onto the floor. Also, this is definitely not gonna be a day of Morgan Spills coffee. This is gonna be Morgan Spills flour. It's been a good day. Okay, go, goodbye, I'll see you next time.